Ethereum's foundation's Virgil Griffith pled guilty Monday to charges related to his trip to North Korea for a blockchain conference. Author Ethan Liu was on that trip. Ethan wrote an article for Coindesk, Seven Nights in Pyongyang, inside the North Korean trip that got Ethereum's Virgil Griffith arrested. He's the author of a new book, Once a Bitcoin Miner, Scandal and Turmoil in the Cryptocurrency Wild West. Joining us now from New York is Ethan Liu. Hello there, Ethan. So you've been tracking the trial of Virgil Griffith in Manhattan. What was your reaction to Virgil Griffith's uh, guilty plea yesterday? He, he could get sentenced uh, up to six and a half years in prison, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was definitely unexpected. I think if you watch how the events unfolded up until a week ago, it seemed as if it was certain that everything was going to go to trial. And uh, for example, a week ago, his lawyers uh, specifically requested uh, not one, but two suits for him to wear to court and in their words, so that he can wear different suits on different days. And, um, and I think one thing we don't know is uh, what exactly changed uh, to spark that uh, guilty plea. Uh, Ethan, if I understand correctly, though, I mean, he was warned about about taking this trip and then took the trip anyway, unless I have something something incorrect. So why was this an unexpected outcome? Well, uh, ever since he was arrested on Thanksgiving in 2019, he was pleading not guilty. And uh, in, in fact, uh, he was so uh, he believes so much in his not guilty plea that uh, in one of his appearances, you know, there are only two pleas, guilty and not guilty, but he didn't choose any of those. He said he was innocent. And uh, up until up, up until the day he pleaded guilty, uh, he had been fighting the charge. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could go back a bit, Ethan. You were on this trip. Tell us a bit about the trip, what you experienced. Was there any, I don't know, wh why was Virgil singled out? Were there other Americans who gave a presentation but weren't punished in this way? Mm -hmm. So I, I do depict the trip a little in my book. And uh, I think uh, one of the reasons Virgil was singled out is definitely that he was the lone American there. And also, uh, I think he was one of the, uh, the the real crypto big shots who were on that trip. I think that the rest of us, you know, we, we, we weren't real blockchain experts like him. And uh, I think he was he was among those when he went into North Korea, he, he knew he was going to give a presentation because uh, a lot of the conference, it was not as advertised. It was a bit of a bait and switch. And for most of us, when we went in, we thought we were going to be participants listening uh, to North Korean presenters. And then they told us, no, you are the presentation. And I actually declined to, uh, to present. But uh, yeah, they basically, uh, the first day we arrived in Korea, they asked us, do you want to present? But I think for Virgil, uh, when he went in, he knew he was going to be a presenter. And, you know, uh, as laid out in the court documents, he did quite a lot of stuff afterward. Uh, Ethan, you have a very unusual perspective as having actually gone on this trip. So could you tell us a little bit about just what some of the things you saw that surprised you? And you personally, what was your motivation? I mean, what did you think you would get out of going to North Korea for this purpose? Uh, well, uh, I wanted to go to North Korea precisely because of its... Uh, it had this shady reputation with respect to crypto. Uh, we've all read the reports of how North Korea had been accused of... Uh, all these hacking attempts and how it's been amassing crypto, how it might, I was using that to, to evade sanctions. And I thought when I went to North Korea for the conference, I was able to see it for myself. I was, I was going to be able to hear from North Koreans, uh, the North Korean crypto people about what they were doing. But it turns out uh, this was, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in China, they have this thing called hire a white person. And basically, you just have a token foreign on a team who to give it prestige. And basically, that was our trip. You know, I, I'm not a white guy, but most of the people were foreigners. And uh, it was a glorified dog and pony show. And there was, uh, there was nothing of substance actually reached at the conference. 
That's really interesting, though, that you came, you went there thinking that you were going to receive a presentation, but then they actually turned the tables on you and asked you to make a presentation. I wonder, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty about what Virgil's presentation was about. Was he educating North Koreans and, and violating U.S. sanctions laws uh, th thereby? What, what, what did he exactly say in his presentation? Are you able to disclose that? Well, uh, Virgil is still due to be sentenced, and the sentence could be anything. So I, I'm not going to say uh, too much about uh, what he specifically did at the conference. But um, I, I can say that what was discussed at the conference in general, it was really surface level thing that you can find with a Google search. And as well, the presentation materials, they were, they were very simple, uh, publicly available research papers. In fact, I, I tuned out through much of the conference because uh, it, it was not what I went there for and it was actually quite boring. <laughs> Ethan, did you learn anything about crypto in North Korea, about, you know, just the level of awareness, how it's being used, how it's not being used? That You said that was kind of what you intended to do. Did you, did you get any takeaways uh, on that? Not at all. And uh, the, so the, the people, the North Koreans we interacted with, our, our government minders, uh, they were... Uh, they weren't on the tech side. They were they were people who were uh, they were from the cultural side, and their their job usually was to chaperone foreign journalists. So, and they were saying, "Oh, we North Korea, we don't know anything about crypto," and uh, it's it's quite clear that's all a all a bit of a performance. And so, I, I think I, I'm a guy who likes to make the most out of everything. So, you know, I, the trip wasn't that bad, but it, I was definitely a little disappointed. So, Ethan, do you have a sense of what the state of crypto is in North Korea? Is there, do they intend to use Bitcoin or do mining operations uh, as a way of interacting with the global economy? Uh, well, I, I don't have a sense uh, any more than uh, what any other person would have uh, when they report. And I, I think right now, um, the, the way North Korea has been accused of using crypto, it's largely to steal it. And that's because, you know, transactions are irreversible. You steal it, you, you, you get the money. But uh, to actually use it to breach sanctions on a, on a more transactional level, I think that takes a, a level of sophistication that uh, uh, I don't think North Korea is up to it yet. Um, Ethan, just given that you are in such a unique position of actually having visited North Korea, um, which, you know, most Americans do not have the opportunity to do, is there anything you could share with us, just anything you saw, even amidst, you know, the boringness or the dog and pony show, like anything you saw that um, was surprising or striking or illustrative in any way? Yeah, uh, well, I have non-crypto insights. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, you know, when the Korean War began in 1950, it was uh it wasn't so much a battle between the Koreas, it was a proxy arena for struggles between bigger powers. And I think it's still very much so now. Uh, the shadow of China is everywhere. And uh, even a university professor there who teaches English will speak in a bit of a heavy accent, but even service staff there, they speak pitch perfect Chinese. And uh, so the, the, the presence of China is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Are you, and, and now that you're in Manhattan, you're watching the, tri the trial happen, do you have a sense of uh, Virgil's state of mind How uh, and what's next for what will happen in the trial for him? Mm, uh, well, I, I don't have any uh, mind reading skills, but I, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in court, I, I saw him and he, he sighed audibly. Um, some, uh, at different times, and he did say that he he has depression and he was taking medication for it, and something like this it must weigh very heavily on him. And as for the next steps, he's he's getting sentenced next year, and so the the defense and the prosecution they've recommended a sentence of uh, between uh, five years, three months to uh, six and a half years, uh, but. The judge isn't bound by that. It could be lower, could be higher. And uh, I think right now uh, that's that's the only uncertainty. And that's probably the potentially the only positive thing for him to come out of this is uh, a lower sentence than what's being recommended. Mm -hmm.
And there is a discussion on crypto Twitter on, on kind of a uh, just a lot of anger that why is the U.S. government going after someone who's just giving a Bitcoin or a blockchain presentation? And I wonder, I must I imagine you must have been also reading the same tweet. So where do you, how do you weigh in and what are your thoughts on the whole discussion? Um, I, I, I think to the government is very much a national security thing. And uh, it's not so much about what Virgil himself accomplished. And, and clearly he, you know, evidently given that he pleaded guilty, he violated the letter of the law. But, you know, the law is always selectively enforced. You have, you have uh, fewer resources than you have laws. So you, you choose the laws you want to enforce. And I think national security is a big deal. North Korea is becoming a bigger threat. And a chief pillar of justice is always deterrence. Uh, to show people the consequences consequences of an act so that they do not attempt it. And I think uh, Virgil, uh, he's definitely a, a bit of a bit player and uh, caught in much bigger tides. Would you say he's a scapegoat? Um, I, 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 I wouldn't say that. I, I think uh, a scapegoat means that he didn't actually do it, but uh, he, he, he did go to North Korea. But uh, I think he's definitely made an example of. 